Hello, everybody. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera. I don't know. I'm just gonna listen to worship music. There's nothing greater than the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're gonna be preaching about. The direction that the Lord has taken me. I spent a lot of time speaking the judgments of God against the church, against the, the governments and the world in general. I've called out so many things. But I've asked the Lord. God has been moving my heart in a new direction right now. And uh, it's for you guys, it's for you. God is gonna do something. It may be for a few, maybe two or three, I don't know. That's, I'll take it. But there's something stirring in my heart. And I wanna bring a message. And I, will, I would love to, Lord willing, you know, if, the, if the Lord allows me, I, I want to spend, I want to shift the direction of my ministry for a, 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 a climaxing moment that I, I want to try to put together. And, you know, we're going to be working on something here. Um, I want to have a, a meeting, a actual, like we had the tent meeting. Um, the emphasis that's on my heart, folks, is there, and I and I hope the Lord, and all I can do is preach this word and bring this message and continue to stay on this 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 path that the Lord I believe is leading me on to to get the word of God to you all to help you understand what is the Holy Ghost. Do you have the Holy Ghost? And, and there's a lot of confusion. The church, the way they present it, there's a lot of there's a lot of misrepresentation of, of the teachings that have been going on through the ages, folks. And I want to be able, by the grace of God, to take the word of God and show you what's on my heart. You know, we preach the tent meeting. What is the mark of the beast, right? And I've hit on that so much. But what matters to my heart now, what, what is on my heart, what, what matters the most is that have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That's what's on my heart. The, the, the loving, precious Lord Jesus Christ, the, 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 the shepherd of our souls, the, the Lamb of God, He wants to do something greater in your life. And that's what's on my heart heavy right now. Because folks, you're not saved until you have the Holy Ghost. And we're gonna show you that. You're on the road, but you're not there until you receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, the other night when I had that experience on Friday night when I, when I got Caught up, I don't even know how to explain it, folks. Caught up in, a, in, a, in the third heaven, seeing it as a vision. I don't even know how to explain it to you all. And when I come out of that moment, because when you catch the heart of God and the mind of God, and as a minister of the gospel, I, I'm constantly seeking the Lord. You know, God is dealing with me. I'm trying to bring the message to you all, to bring His word. I, 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 I'm just wired this way. You know, I, I, I'm just, I can't, it's hard to explain it in words with, with the makeup that the Lord has given me. And, and just, I, I love His presence. I, I, I literally just, I'm always looking for His presence. I'm always looking for the Holy Spirit. I'm looking, I'm protecting it with my heart, my soul. It's when you see, you see the anger, that righteous indignation overcomes me because I'm coming against the very things that are against the very, the very, the very Holy Ghost that, that I that I love, that has changed my life, the life of God living in the in my soul. Amen. My Lord Jesus Christ, 
Amen. Who took a part, who died and, and gave his life and then promised to send his spirit back upon the church. Little licks of fire that come down and change into the compartment of the soul. And understanding how gentle the dove, the dove is. That's why I called that lady out right here on this channel, lady. And you know, I know you and you know me. And we, you know, we, we, we dwell right next door to each other. But you grieve the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wave at me now. You can ignore me. That's fine. I will protect the Holy Ghost. Because there are people out there who want the Holy Ghost. And God wants to do something for you. That's the purpose of this meeting that I'm planning, Lord willing. I'm not sure where we're going to have it yet. I'm looking for two nights, maybe the first week of December. I expect the enemy to battle me. I ask for your prayers. I want it to be a meeting that is, that is set up, designed for the Holy Ghost. That people will come prayed up and ready to receive from God and to receive the true, the true baptism of the Holy Spirit. To be able to be under that, that whatever God has planned for you. I'm asking God for this. I, I, he's put it in my heart to do this. The other night when I was in the gym, and I'm listening to, to Brother Brandon preach, Christ is a mystery of God revealed. And I am, you know, turn this down a little bit here. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit comes on me. And, and Brother Brandon makes a statement that the law was sent to judge and the, and the prophets are sent to bring judgment and death. And I, and I thought, Lord, I look at my, my ministry, I look at my makeup, I look at everything about my life. And, and God, I'm speaking these hard messages. I am tearing it up. I bring, in, I bring that prophecy in that, in, that, in that tent meeting message. Those things are hard, folks. They're not easy to bring. That's why I went through depression. That's why you go through these battles. Things that people only, it's hard, it's hard to, unless you've been walked through those, it's hard to, to convey to you what it is. But then the Lord Jesus Christ lifts me up. And I'm in the kitchen. After the whole experience, after I put it on, on the channel. And I lay my, I'm laying my head on the floor. I'm laying on the kitchen floor by my, <laughs> by my trash can. And I'm just crying out to God under that, that sweet Holy Spirit. That's why I protect it, folks. You show up late and you're laughing or you somebody leaves early. You just you disturb the gentle Holy Ghost. He's a little dove. Oh God have mercy. See the line in me is God gave me this line anointing for a reason. This this prophet calling it out to, to, to judge it. To shake it as I've shook it upside down. In my days in that ministry, they're not done. But right now, I feel like God is wanting to shift something here. To teach you guys, to show you guys what is the Holy Spirit. The true representation of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, I feel your presence. Oh, hallelujah. So when I'm listening in, Brother Random says, the prophets bring judgment and death. Jesus Christ brings mercy. And folks, I can't explain it. Something moved in my heart in that gym at two in the morning working out. I don't know. I can't explain to you. I got on my knees right there and I'm crying out to God. Oh, Lord. Here's what's on my heart. There are so many people that I love. There are people that are on my Facebook page, go to church. It's funny, I posted the cloud, it happened supernaturally, showing the judgment of God. 
And then you got a bunch of these women, Jezebels, keep posting their cloud pictures now. Yeah. P trying to flip the whole narrative is to flip it a direction of it's all peace and love and rainbows and sunshine. It's not. This world is under judgment. But God wants to, I'm trying to let you convey and to get into God's heart. He wants to do something for you. He's doing something in your life. But many people think they got the Holy Ghost and they don't have it yet. I have a lady that, that used to cut my hair and I don't know if she listens to my channel anymore. I'll probably send this message to you. And we, you can feel the Holy Ghost all over you. Oh man, just hear the word I'm about ready to bring. May the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. I want the same Jesus Christ who walked on this earth to do something for you. To change your life. And the, and the change that I'm talking about is not that you feel the Holy Ghost, not that you shout, dance in the Spirit, you can do all those things, but you get that experience that's, you know that you know that you know that you've crossed the Jordan River and you got the Holy Ghost. The other night on Friday night, I, I took, grabbed an empty, I always, I always use a bottle to explain to you about receiving the Holy Ghost. I've done it before. I had an empty one. I stuck on top of the fridge and I said, oh God, I want something to happen for your people. So I'm putting together this meeting. And I put a water bottle full right next to it. Let me tell you something. Because it represents receiving the being filled with the Holy Ghost. And I don't know what happened, but the empty bottle fell off the fridge and it's not there, but that obviously the I said, Lord, are you showing me something? God's got something for you. But you gotta seek it and you gotta want it with everything you got. It has to be the most desperate desperation of your life of your very life. Hallelujah. And if I am truly a prisoner of Jesus Christ, then I have to t and I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't 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 take it personal. Don't flip the chant the, the message off cuz you start to get your flesh starts to get tore up a little bit. See it as the, the loving nail scarred hands of Jesus Christ because he loves you. Amen. I'm going to turn my uh, this music down a little bit. I'm obviously in my basement. Obviously I'm by myself. And um, here we go. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, Lord, help me to teach this word now. Let me pray before I get any farther. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet dove of God, you're such a, the Holy Ghost is, is, is so gentle, Lord. You're so gentle. Father, may the gentle dove help us to receive the word, Lord. Help us to see Christ, Lord, what you're saying. You choose, the, this is the order of things. You choose, you call men, and you give them the Holy Ghost, and then you have them preach your word to your very people. It's just your program, Lord. It's it's the way you've done it since, you know, since uh, the, the, just it's the book of Genesis, Lord. Since the dawn of time. So, Lord, I pray this, just this, this, your humble, your servant, Lord. I'm no better than nobody else, Lord. 
or nothing, Lord. It's all glory. Every, every We will cast our crowns at your feet, Lord Jesus. As that experience that I had Friday night, Lord, it has changed something in me, Lord. Your throne, your presence, you're real, you're heaven. It, what, 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 what waits beyond the curtain of time? The eye cannot see, the Bible says, and what the ear understands. It. We, we, can we even fathom, children of God, what God has prepared for us, what's waiting for us? That the, our Lord Jesus Christ paved that way for us. But we have an enemy. And he comes to your mind, the receiving station. But may the Holy Spirit give us the word there to, to rebuke him and overcome him. So Lord, I pray now, bless the word, help your people to receive the word, to understand, do you have the Holy Ghost? We ask you in Jesus Christ's name, help me, Lord, now, get myself out of the way, work through me, Lord, preach through me, speak through me, teach through me, whatever you desire, Lord. We pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, John 14 and verse 16, he says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Okay? So the Holy Spirit, folks, is going to lead you and guide you to all truth. Okay? Why do you think that I am so adamant of ha preaching from the King James Version Bible? It's been proven. It's a translation that's been around for many, 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 many hundreds of years. Every major revival has took place from those who preach from it. And then as you know, we were discussing this week through texting and conversations, how these new versions that come out, they take scriptures from the Word, they leave scriptures out, they, 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 the, the wording becomes, a, it's a, sometimes it can be a slight altering of, of the scripture. That's a, that was Satan's plan, folks. That was Satan's plan. Because he said, I will, he said, the spirit of truth, so when God gives us the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is or, or the Holy Ghost is present in your life. Because once you become a child of God, I want to explain to you, the Holy Ghost then becomes present in your life. And he begins to teach you things and reveal things to you, folks. But you can have the Holy Ghost there present and yet still don't have the Holy Ghost. Now, we're going to show you that. Whom the world cannot receive. The world. And we, you know, the world, we can wrap a lot of things around that, right? The governments, the, the, the movie stars, the different things. The, and, the, and, and we have talked about this before. Jesus talked about the world's going to hate you as it hated him. And we, we made it very clear through the scriptures. Who hated Jesus? Who killed him? Who crucified him? The church. That's the world, folks. Because it, it, it adds to the word, it takes from the word, it doesn't want to recognize what Christ is doing today, that he's the I am, it wants to live in a, in a past movement, it wants to denominate it around a past movement, it doesn't stay with the pillar of fire as he moves and catches the mind of God for its present hour. Amen? It twists the word up, so he says, the world can't receive it. Well, they can't, because they don't want it. Folks, they don't want the truth, okay? Because it seeth him not, he says. Neither knoweth him. See, it, 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 the world doesn't know the Holy Ghost. So when you're going to a church that's not staying with the Word, you will feel the Holy Ghost there. And I want to preach this in the most gentlest way I can. There's some things at the end I'll probably preach at the end. There's something I want to bring out. But I want to bring as gentle as I can to this to you all. That there are you're going to walk in these churches because it's it's the world's wrapped into it, and because it can't see him, 
It, it's not bringing you the truth. So you'll be sitting there and you'll say, but Paul, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen, you do. That's right, you feel the Holy Ghost. You feel the presence of God. Yes, you do. You're feeling the Holy Ghost, but you're missing the spirit of truth is, is not present in that, in that church because it's got the world mixed into it. Okay? So, because it seeth him not, it neither knows him. Who's him? The Holy Spirit. Okay? It doesn't know the spirit of truth. So, and we talk about many times how when God, something in you one day, you heard the truth, and you something in your heart stirred, and you realize, you know what, my church isn't bringing it, and God called you out of the world. He called you out of the church. He said, come out of her, my people. As the word says, don't be partaker with her, her plagues. What is she plagued with? That she can't get the truth. She's plagued with she can't bring the truth to bring about a new birth to get you to get the Holy Ghost. Okay? He'll, she'll let you feel the Holy Ghost. She'll let you prophesy. She'll let you be a, sing songs. She'll let you dance in the Spirit. She'll let you speak in tongues. She'll let you do a lot of things. But she'll never get you to the Holy Ghost receiving it. Okay? Now, now he says he, he says, but, but he says, but ye, ye, you, you, ye, know him. For he dwelleth, now catch this, he dwelleth with you. And then he says, and he shall be in you. Two things here. He's dwelling with you, but he wants to take it farther. He shall be in you. That's what we're trying to, we want to get to here, folks. Now the Holy Ghost, with his, with his elect, who he calls them out, you catch the revelation. You see the word of God. You go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You catch what the word says. We're going to talk about the water and the spirit, and we're going to break that down. Okay? And, and you catch, and Lord, help me to, like, bring, help me, Lord, to teach this to your people, Lord. And you catch the truth, because the Holy Ghost dwelleth with you. He's revealing himself, but he wants to do a greater work. He wants to be in you. The Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance. Every one of us have a gift we're born with. God gives all of his children gifts. Okay, But it isn't until you receive the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost that then that gift and becomes and begins to operate in your life. That God can begin to work through that gift. Okay. Now, there are many who it's so close. You know, I, I can feel all oh, I can feel some of the Jezebels out there. That's kind of why my I felt, I felt. I know I any Jezebels who try to listen to this preaching, and probably some of them still do, who reject the Word of God. Who say, well, hey, I'm, I'm operating my gift, you know. Who got the Holy Ghost, you know, remember we talked about, I don't want to, the thing is, I'm, 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 come, I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I want to bring us to the elect. And if I start thinking about Jezebel and the church, I'm going to, you're going to see my face change. And I'm going to, I ask God, I want to go in a different direction for a reason. I have a, I have a mission I'm on again. The Lord has given me a, a mindset for this. So, now, so I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to stay with where I'm at. Okay? Because Jezebel is always going to be there. That's just the way it is. She's, you know, she's always got a prophecy or something. You know? Okay. So now, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Remember that. Okay? So you can have the Holy Ghost. I wrote down here. I studied this two days ago, I believe, and I was looking over it again earlier. And add a couple more things. But you can have the Holy Spirit dwelling with you. And I have the Holy Spirit in you, which is the compartment of the soul. Now, I wanted to study this, and maybe, you know, again, I want to stay in this direction. I don't know how long. I want, there's a lot of things, there's a direction I want to go. There's a lot of things about the grace of God that I want to show and I want to bring out. And I've hit on it before, 
And we're gonna and by the grace by the Lord willing, these are the things I want to bring, okay? But one of the things that if you go in the Old Testament, the types and shadows. There was the, 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 the temple that was uh, you know, Moses had them build at that time, or the, in, in the, in the, in the height the priests came in. And again, I'm just going to top of my head here. I didn't, I didn't look at it yet. I wanted to, and I, I just hadn't done it yet. But there was the, was the outer courts. There was, the, there, was three, there was three steps to this. I know that. There was the holies, and then there was the holies of holies, okay? So... That that was a that was a that was showing that we are we are a triune being, us we are body soul and spirit okay, okay we're body soul and spirit like that tabernacle in the wilderness. The holy the holies, is your spirit, and you can and you can like I talked about before you can the Holy Ghost will be dwelling with you. I've said this before. And I've proved it by the Word of God. You can feel the Holy Ghost 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, and still die lost. Yeah. Because you're having the Holy Ghost coming on your spirit. You're feeling it, but you're not going all the way and getting it to the going into the holies of holies, which is the soul. Science has actually proved there's a little compartment in your heart. It's called the compartment of the soul. See, even science bears witness of God's plan folks why does the bible say as a man thinketh in his heart so is he not your mind don't don't get don't listen your those thoughts hitting your mind those are not your thoughts the bible says the thoughts of the righteous are right so where are all these thoughts coming from we're constantly dealing with and they start influencing us our spirit which is our flesh which is still sin a direction it's the enemy but the soul is the compartment it's who you truly are and that's what I want to preach to. I want to preach to the soul, the soul of men and women that, that follow this channel. Now, if you look at the word, the word, the Greek, and you take the word, the word I in shall be in, in you. Get the Greek. I looked it up. Matthew 1:18. That word is used again, but now it's used as the word of. Listen to this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, at his, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, therefore they, before they came together, she was found with child of, the same word in, the Holy Ghost. So she was found with child within her, within her womb, of the Holy Ghost. But where was where was the Holy Ghost dwelling within her womb? Folks, it's, God's already showing something here, okay? Now, again, another place, Matthew 1 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. This is Joseph, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her. I and in her is of the Holy Ghost. So he says, he shall be in you. That same word, that's the child that's inside her, it was of the Holy Ghost, is in you. Amen? Okay? Now, which produces a birth. The birth of the Savior. Amen? Remember that. Birth. You must be born again. Jesus' first message you ever preached to Nicodemus. I don't have it over here. My very first sermon God gave me to preach. My 18 years old, you must be born again. That was Jesus Christ's first message he preached. You must be born again to Nicodemus. And we're going to talk about that. Now, now in the, in the same Greek word, okay, I am. Now I've already hit on that. This is just from a message from Brother Branham called The Message of the Breach from 1963, quote number 32. Now, while we got the scriptures open, he says, let us see the Holy Spirit here itself is a seal. So the Holy Ghost can be dwelling with you, but still you're not sealed. It's when he's in you, it becomes a seal. Okay? Remember that. And a seal signifies what? A finished work. Remember that statement, finished work. Finished work. 
the Holy Spirit being a seal, a seal to the individual, to you as an individual. And to that individual, when he receives the Holy Spirit, then his time of groaning is over. Because it is a finished work. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, John chapter 14. Back to that again. Go down and we're going to go to 18. He says here, I will not leave you comfortless. He says, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you shall live also. At that day, you shall know. He says, at that day, there's going to be a moment. There's going to be a moment in your life. There's going to be a moment in experience that at that day, you shall know. That's what he's talking about. There's going to be a moment in time in your life. Amen? And you'll know it. At that day, you shall know. What? Because you got the Holy Ghost. That I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Amen? He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them. Don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost, and you keep denying the Word. Or you keep rejecting the word. Or you keep making excuses for those sins in your life and calling it, well, I, you know, I, the grace of God's covering this. Of course it's the grace of God. And we're going to talk, we're going to preach, we're going to keep getting into this more, folks. I got a lot of things that I hope I can spend the next weeks preaching about. But he says here, he keepeth, folks. The Holy Ghost inside you will continue. You may fall in sin. You may have moments as we, we do. We're in the flesh, folks. But the Holy Ghost will not allow that those sins to hold on to you. You can't, folks. It can't. Amen. It can't. Because sin is unbelief. It's, it's, it's because if, if there's still unbelief in your heart, and you're still wanting to hold on to those habits, and you still want to keep drinking, smoking cigarettes, and gambling, and all these things of the world, you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, but the Holy Ghost dwelleth with you. He's working in your life. Okay? Now, and don't get upset. Let the word, you know, what, what got me, and I'm gonna, you know, I've shared my experience before, what it took to got me to that point of getting the Holy Ghost was I didn't let the preaching of the gospel offend me. I said, you know what? This this is this is what it is, and I want it. I I, mean, I don't want. I ain't gonna make any excuses. So stop making excuses, Amen. Stop making excuses to hold on to your sin, Amen. The bride, the elect, won't make excuses. She'll want to go to the cross. She'll she'll give. She'll lay everything down. 